Hello, I'm Jennifer McCormick, Chief of Collections and Archivist here at the Charleston Museum. The goal of any museum is to bring the past forward. And today I will be doing just that with this very nondescript 19th century ledger housed in the archives, donated to the museum in 1939 by Samuel Gilliard Stoney. It records the names and dates of enslaved people hired out to toil at the West Point rice mill. Built sometime in 1841, the first rice mill was lost to fire in November of 1860. The images you see now actually show the second West Point rice mill, similar in design and finished in 1861. In its heyday, the original building, a massive four-story brick structure, had storage space for 40,000 bushels of rough rice and contained two high-pressure steam engines that operated the huge mortar and pestles. The ledger dates from January of 1844 to March of 1855, and within its pages are found the names of enslavers and the enslaved people hired out on a daily basis to labor in the mill. At times, the preparer also made marks next to the enslaved person's name, noting any unusual event that occurred on a given day. Especially noted are taken away, discharged, and dead. However, during the month of June in 1849, there is a somber but mysterious short sentence next to the name Jimmy, arrested on the 10th and executed for the murder of Thomas Morrison on the 6th July. Jimmy, an enslaved man owned by Captain Joseph Jenkins, was hired out to the rice mill from 1847 until that day on June 10th in 1849. He was also assigned the duty of a fireman in the event a fire broke out in the mill. Researching the ledger and testimonies printed in the Charleston Courier allows us to somewhat piece together what happened on the night of June 9, 1849. That Saturday night, Jimmy and another enslaved man by the name of Charles Purcell snuck back into the mill with the intention of stealing rice. According to testimony, both men were caught in the boiler house when the night watchman Thomas Morrison discovered them. A struggle ensued and the watchman was overpowered and killed from two blows to the head with a large stick. The two then tied a length of rope to the body and attached it to an iron pinion wheel, throwing him overboard into the murky water. After stealing a small boat, they rowed up the Ashley River with the stolen rice to sell to the Dutchman on South Bay, who paid them a little over $10 for their ill-gotten property. Caught the next day, both men testified against one another so we can never be sure who delivered the decisive stroke that fractured the skull of Thomas Morrison. Unfortunately, the testimony of coroner J.P. DeVoe implicated Jimmy as the killer. And so it was the unanimous opinion of the jury that he was the one who inflicted the fatal blow. However, both men were executed by hanging on July 6, 1849. It is hard to know the life of all three men by a one-line sentence placed in a ledger so long ago. However, their stories deserve to be told and research is ongoing. Thank you for joining us in learning more of what is held in the museum's archives and in celebrating 250 years at America's First Museum. I hope to see you in our galleries soon.